So in the twilight hour of the seventh day, after a week of great fun and enjoyment, Tali took Cassandra's place and disappeared into the mirror. And Cassandra was free to live her life with Samantha, her best friend Jamaica, and the sisters of the Ubla di Ubla da Sirarity. Oh, what adventures Cassandra had planned. Good luck, Tully, and thank you. Um, all the sisters understood why Tully did it. Uh, Tully did it because it offered her a chance to be cured. Almost as soon as Tully disappeared into the mirror, she reappeared in a souped-up flying wheelchair. Tully, they all screamed, what happened? It's all so wonderful. Did you go into the future? They all wanted to know. Is time travel possible? No. In the mirror they wanted to know who I was. They, I'm not sure, it was all so strange. That, so I, I saw my life pass before me, I mean my entire life. And then they said, Your life has been one of sacrifice and suffering. We will cure you and return you. And I said, will I be able to walk? And they said, well, you were born without the ability to walk. It's like if a person were born blind. If he had gone blind a minute after he was born, we would be able to restore his sight because it's in the plan. But as with the person born without sight, you were born without the ability to walk. It was never in your plan. So no, we cannot restore what you never had. But we know what your mission was. We understand your plan. We feel bad, but there is nothing we can do. But to compensate you for the knowledge we have gained and the data you have shared, we will upgrade your wheelchair and transform it into a battle chair, life pod, uh, from the Beltonian Empire a race that the moon rocks had come across in their travels. Oh, and the moon rocks. They're kind of like a council. They, they're a life form. All of their minds, they, they came across on, all of their minds on, uh, in, uh, all of the people they've cut, they came across on Earth that were at the same vibration level as they were, were offered ascension. And they said that it was not at the, I was not at the right vibration level, and that Cassandra had been at the right vibration level, but that her vibration had shifted and it was no longer, it no longer was. So the moon rocks that uh, had formed the Mera were now free to journey on and to rejoin the other moon rocks that had journeyed on long ago. Um... So I'm free, asked Cassandra. Yes, said Tully, We're, we all are. And Cassandra danced a happy dance. And Tully flew her, her battle chair life pod around the room. Uh, so these moon rocks, they just touched down and then moved on, asked Jamaica. Yes, said Tully. You know so much, you, you learned so much in a minute, said Cassandra. Well, I spent centuries in that mirror without a single memory of my time in there. I think it's the battle cheer, said Tully, uh, that remembers. It remembers everything. I, I have memories of galactic empires in my head that vanished millions of years ago. Crystal clear memories of things that I have no way of knowing, like protocols and safeguards that are uh, built into this cheer. I I'm not afraid of history repeating itself because I trust, or that is to say the cheer trusts, that the protocols and safeguards will do that. Uh, this is a very powerful cheer. Uh, when Jamaica realized that the way Cassandra looked at Samantha, that there was something more than simply sisterly love going on, so she told Cassandra that they needed to talk. Cassandra, I want you to know that Samantha and I are not really enemies. You don't have to hide anything from me. Trust me, I hid who I was for years, and 
I know how destructive a lie can be. I'm sorry, Cassandra. Said, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm sorry, Jamika, said Sandra. You're my best friend, and I would trust you with my life, but I don't feel the same way for you as I do for Samantha. What? What? Well, it's good you don't, because I like men. But Cassandra, beyond that, I myself was born a man, and I always knew that no matter my physical appearance on the outside, at my core, I was a woman. It's not something I decided, it's something I am. And I transitioned to a woman as soon as it was legal to do so. As soon as, you know, um, as soon as I got old enough that it was legal to do so. Um, and I have never looked back or down since with regret. Tommy Winthrop, said Cassandra. He was a young man I knew growing up who thought he was a woman. And because he was so beautiful, he looked like one. And all the girls were in love with him. He was this unattainable God put on this earth to torment us with his beauty. But as we got older, well, people talk. And one day he stood in the docket for his crimes and he was stoned to death. And I and many of my friends at the time, we all cried our eyes out because he was so beautiful. And we were all so madly in love with him because of his beauty, his perfection. So you've known someone like me? Yes. And I'm sure he would have done the same thing as you did if he had lived in this world. I'm sure of it. So can we still be friends? Yes. And from now on when I look at you, you will always remind me of him, Tommy Winthrop.